world here is that many of us started to call ourselves Israelis. The word Israeli came instead of the word Jew. And it confused the situation. We are first of all Jews. We are Israelis by nationality because we happen to live in the land of Israel. We have Israeli passports, but that's not what makes us different or what gives us right to this land. Let me again say it different. What we have to realize, and slowly more and more Israelis are realizing this, is that if you don't want to return to the Holy Land, then there is nowhere to return to. If we are not going back and saying, like Ben-Gurion understood quite cre clearly, also he was a secular Zionist, but he understood one thing very well when he was asked, on the basis of what are the Jews allowed to go back to the land of Israel? And he said, on the basis that we have a mandate. What is your mandate? And he answered in, an, in the United Nations, the Bible. He understood quite well the relationship. Israeli history didn't start in 1948. It started 4,000 years ago. But if you want to deny that, because it stands in the way, because it doesn't allow you the normalization which you are looking for, then you are telling yourself a story which ultimately doesn't work, as we see now at this hour happening to us. And that, my friends, is the reason why you are not allowed to count Jews. And I tell you why. You already forgot about the question, right? I tell you why. I can read you out in one sentence. There was a very famous sociologist, Jewish sociologist. You may have heard about him. He wrote a lot. He was called Milton Himmelfarb, famous American Jewish sociologist, who once wrote the following line, which is, I think is the best line he ever wrote. He's no longer alive. And I want you to listen. I would like you to write this line down and hang it above your bed. And every morning when you get to your bed, you read that just that one sentence. You know what it goes? It goes like this. I have it in front of me over here. The total population of the Jews throughout the world today, I repeat, the total population of the Jews throughout the world today is smaller is smaller than a statistical error in the Chinese census. I repeat that. It's crucial to understand that. The to sum total of how many people we are as Jews throughout the whole of the world, the whole of the Jewish community, is smaller than a statistical error in the Chinese census. If you take a computer and you count the Chinese and you make a small little medical mistake or you just push the wrong button, then the amount of the Chinese which fall off are more than the sum total of the Jewish people. So small we are. And if we are so incredibly small, then to start counting our strengths by how many we are is the greatest mistake you can make. And that is my answer to why the Torah said you are not allowed to count Jews. Because you don't count Jews because counting numbers don't really play a role in our case. If it would have been amounts of Jews, we would have disappeared 4,000, 3,000 years ago. There would not be a Jew around anymore. But we are the only nation which is 4,000 years old. We are the only nation which is so terribly small that we should never have been there anymore. We are the only nation which most of the time lived outside the land of Israel and not inside the land of Israel under the most impossible conditions. And we outlift everybody. We had Holocaust, we had pogroms, we have inquisitions, we have had anything what you can think of it, you cannot even imagine. We cannot ourselves imagine. And we outlift this all because of numbers. There were never any numbers in Israel. We are a small little nation. The world keeps us small. 
And in fact, the Torah says very clearly, when Moses is speaking before he dies, he says to the Jewish people, Lo mikol ha'amim chashak Hashem bachem. Not because of the multitude of Jews did I indeed somehow, let's say, go for you or choose for you. Vayifchar bachem ki atem ha'ma'at mikol ha'amim. Because you are the smallest among the nations in the world. And the whole world is focused on us, like at this very hour. As if we are doing a terrible thing. What's about what is happening in also parts of the country where much worse situations happen? Where people die by the tens of thousands of them? From hunger, from war? If it gets altogether attention, it is in the last page of the New York Times. But if God forbid an Israeli soldier makes a mistake and kills a young child, which is bad enough, and he, his life is destroyed because of the fact that he made that mistake, the whole world falls on top of that one soldier, Israeli soldier. Double standards, completely out of proportion. Now let me ask you one more question. So how do you count Jews? And you know the answer. The Torah says how you count Jews. Hear this. You count Jews by the contributions they have made. When the Torah says, I want you to take half a shekel, put it into the charity box of the temple, and then afterwards you count them, then the Torah is making a very important statement. The power of the Jew lies not in how many they are, but in how many contributions did they make to the world. That's exactly what the Torah is trying to get us to. For the rest... We are not there. For the rest, we live in a different world. And it is high time that we start to realize that. Because only when we indeed have our own identity, and we are not what I call use the borrowed identity of somebody else, and telling ourselves stories about who we are when we will never be like that, and it is not within our nature, and it is not within our soul, then we are only undermining ourselves. And that is at this hour so important that we get our Jewish identity back. I'm not at all in favor of starting a halachic state. I don't even believe that we should have a religious state. I shall not go into this now. But we definitely need a Jewish state. And that means to say that it takes, makes hold. It takes hold. It uses Jewish concepts. Because that is what we need. Identity. And identity does not come from being an Israeli. Identity comes from 4,000 years of Jewish experience, of something which relates to the Jewish tradition. Each one can do that in his own way, some people more, some people less. If we forget about that, and I've written in my book, I published a book for the 60th birthday of Israel, where I wrote about this and I said, this is our greatest challenge now. How are we seeing ourselves? What is going to be with our children and our grandchildren when we don't give them these values which makes us different from the rest of the world so that we are able to contribute to the world as Jews? Because then we can make a proper contribution. Once we start to assimilate, there's nothing to contribute anymore to it. We're only undermining ourselves. There's a long road to go here for the state of Israel. There's a long road to go here for the government of Israel. And as I am not going to get involved in any kind of politics here, but we have to realize, and Baruch Hashem, I must say that I hear more and more in the educational system, even in the secular educational system, we need more Jewish education in the secular Jewish Israeli school system. We must make people to walk away with a feeling of pride. Wow, I belong to the Jewish people. What we have done up till now, why did we come back to this particular country? If we do that, we have a fantastic future. We have an unbelievable possibilities to help ourselves, our children, and the world around us. If we are going to sell out on our identity, we are our undermining ourselves, and we do worse to ourselves than all our enemies can do. No nation can live with a borrowed identity. We have to understand one thing. Or we go back, as I said before, to the holy land, or there is no land to go back to. May God bless the state of Israel. 
May he bless the Jewish people. May he bless at this hour the Israeli 